Hello guys, so today we are going to create our first game project. So without further ado, let's just get started. I'm going to create a project. Let me call it Pong. Don't create. Now let me create a class. And just call it game, right? Uh, let me close this for now. We wouldn't be needing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is extends jpanel and then implements action listener and time listener, right? Oh, action listener and key listener. So what the action listener does, it listens to time-based events and key listener allows you to give keyboard inputs to your game. And jpanel is basically a component that goes onto your window on which the game will be played. So let me just import everything I need. Import this, import this as well. So let me just minimize this a bit. Okay, so now also let me add all the methods, right? You have to do this when you're implementing interfaces, which is action listener and key listener over here. So first thing, public static void main string args. Okay, j frame frame is equal to new j frame and let me give the title to the window let me just call it pong right let me also create an object of game class so frame game dot okay so i'm basically mentioning the size of the game here so first let me do this Went width is equal to 200 and height is equal to 400 right okay so game dot set for size new dimension okay width and height perfect so let me just do this as well and i have to make this static before i use them in my main class so main function sorry i have done that as well now i can import dimension right now frame dot back frame dot set default close operation j frame dot exit on close that j frame j frame dot exit on close okay frame dot set this will true perfect now because i'm creating the game right here i need to create a constructor as well so game and i'm just going to add some key listeners to our game so first thing i'm going to do is the key listener okay so this dot add key listener this and this dot focusable so can i focus our panel and give it some inputs uh, this dot set focusable true yes and this dot set focus traversal key is enabled to false so this is something that you don't really have to care too much about you can just add this and you say now i need an action listener okay so this is for time based events right so before that i need a timer uh, to implement my time based events so timer t is equal to new timer and the first parameter will basically tell me how many milliseconds do i want uh, the game to cycle um, its operation so let me say in 20 milliseconds Right. and let me import my timer from javax.swing okay so t dot start now every 20 milliseconds our t dot start calls this function over here right action perform so let me just give it this function free pain and now let me write our free pain function right public void paint component graphics g Super dot paint component graphics G okay graphics 2e G2 is equal to let me cast our G graphics to a 2e graphics graphics G2 so let me do this okay basically our G2 is used to print out 2e objects onto the G panel so before that let's just look at our game as it is now okay uh, I haven't yet added our game to the frame so let me do that so done and now we should probably see a good window yes now we have our uh, form window of the required width and height but we don't have anything on it so that's what we're going to add now so let me just first print the background 
print or paint g2 dot set color um, color dot black right so g2 dots um, fill bounds g2 dot fill get bounds okay so now it's going to fill my whole window black yeah perfect now what i need is our ball right so ball variables so int ball x is equal to 50 int ball y is equal to 50 and int ball size is equal to 20 okay now in java the indexing starts from this top left location so this is 0 comma 0 and this is with comma height so when i say 50 comma 50 it's probably going to be somewhere in this region so let me just print out the ball so paint the ball g2 dot set color color dot white okay so because i'll be using the white paint for a lot of other objects as well so i put it here so g2 dot fill oval okay so ball x ball y ball size and ball size now let me just look at the screen perfect we have a ball but our ball is not yet moving so how do we do that so let me just give it a uh, two components of uh, speed so int ball speed x that's the speed in the x direction and int ball speed y so also let me mention our allowed ball speed in this way int ball speed right so int ball speed is equal to 5 and let me put ball speed here and ball speed here okay now if you remember we had our timer component so this cycles every 20 milliseconds right so now i want the ball's position to get updated every 20 milliseconds so it's very simple to do that so ball x plus equal to ball speed x and ball y plus equal to ball speed y now let's take a look at the screen perfect our ball is beginning to move but you know just one big problem our ball should bounce off the top and the bottom edges so how are we going to achieve that let's take a look so collision from top and bottom edges right so let me just do this before that and put it here okay so if ball y less than equal to zero or ball y plus ball size greater than or equal to uh, height so at that point what i want to do is ball speed y is equal to minus ball speed y so basically i'm just telling to reverse the direction when it hits the top of the bottom edge so let's look at that okay it's going and it bounces perfect now we have a ball ready what we need is our paddles right so let's fill that as well paddle variables okay so int paddle height is equal to 100 and let me say the paddle width is pretty thin right so 20 perfect so now we need our two paddles so let's create our player one paddle player one so this is going to be something like p1 x is equal to zero and uh, int p1 y so this is going to follow a bit of formula so i just want you to trust me on this so height minus paddle height by two right and this is for player two as well so player two okay int p1 p2x is equal to so player I mean this is going to be width minus paddle width right and int okay so for our int p2y we just want to copy the same thing and put here right and I'm just going to put this here. Perfect. So now we have our two paddles. We just have to print them on the screen. So this is what we're going to do. So now that we've printed the ball, print the ball. So we need to print out our paddles as well. So paint the paddles. Okay. So this is player one. Okay. G2 dot fill rect. So we have P1x, P1y, paddle width, and paddle length. Perfect. And now we have to print out the player 2 paddle. So player 2, right? So P2x, P2y. Yeah, perfect. Now let's look at our game. Perfect. We have paddles. But if you notice one thing, the ball is not on 
bouncing off the paddles now. So we have to solve that issue. Okay, so here we have the collision of the top and bottom edges. Now we have to add the collision from the paddles. So how are we going to do that? Let's take a look. So collision from layer two paddle. Okay, so if ball x plus ball size greater than p2 greater than equal to p2 x. Okay, and if ball y plus ball size greater than p2 y. Right, and and ball y less than p2 y plus parallel height. Now this may seem a bit tricky at the moment, but basically we're just combining two conditions right here. So these are the two possible boundary conditions. So ball y plus ball size uh, should be greater than paddle y, as you can see in this example, and ball y uh, should be less than paddle y plus paddle height. So these are the times that the ball will actually hit the paddle and can reverse its direction. So that's what we are going to implement now. So if uh, the paddle and the ball collide, the ball is supposed to reverse its direction. So I'll just pick this out from here and I'll add that here and I'll add this as well. So now let's just take a look at our program again. So let me just run it. So here we have a ball going and it collides. Perfect. So all I have to do now is to add the player one collision as well. So I'll just do this. This is fairly simple. I just have to change all the p 2 y's to p one y's here and balls ball x less than equal to p one x perfect now we have a collision from the two paddles now moving on to an important step we have to make the two paddles move how are we going to do that let's just take a look i'm just going to employ a neat little trick before that so in p one duh is equal to zero int p2 dot is equal to 0. So dot for direction, right? And uh, int paddle speed. Let me just give the max allowed paddle speed and let me set it to something like 10, right? And now we have to update the paddle location. So this is basically updating the ball location, right? And now let me update paddle location. So this is for paddle 1, right? So p1y plus equal to dot into paddle speed and same thing for paddle p1 dot plus paddle speed and i'll do the same thing for paddle 2 as well right uh, now if you run this program uh, actually nothing happens the paddles remain where they are so now we have to move these paddles using uh, the statement so how are we going to do that we are going to give it some inputs and that is going to be in the form of our uh, key controls so let's do that so let me go back here and we have our key press event so if you remember we added our key listener to our, uh, our j panel so let's just test this out first so i'm just going to go here and say system dot dot print ln some key was pressed right so let me just do this and okay now i'm pressing keys onto the screen and then you can also see this console output right so some key was pressed okay got it perfect so now let me use my arrow keys for uh, my player to paddle and wasd for my player one paddle so in code is equal to b dot get excellent key code if code uh code equals equals key event dot vk up right so this is basically me directing my parallel two to go up so p2 dot is equal to minus one right and now let me add a bit more okay if I press the down key then it has to go down so p2 uh, dot is equal to 1 and finally I need to stop the paddle so also I'll have this so left is equal to 0 so let's just test this out okay so for some reason Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, perfect. So here was the issue. So let me just change this to p dot, and hopefully this moves now. As you can see, perfect. We have a 
file is moving. Actually, I think it's too fast, so let me just go and reduce the max allowed speed a bit. So we have our max allowed speed at n, I'm reducing to 5. So what I have to do is to give the same moment to parallel 1 as well. So I'll just go to this key pressed uh, method again and I will copy this and do the same for play 1. So w means player 1 parallel goes up, uh, s means player 1 parallel goes down, and if or D is pressed, that means the P1 idle stays where it is. Okay, and before we move on to the next step, I will just introduce another change here. So, the ball should reflect off these edges only if it is traveling in that direction. So, uh, let's just add that component here as well. So, and, and, ball speed x greater than 0. And, and, ball speed x less than zero okay and uh, here too i'm going to add the same thing and and ball speed less than zero and and ball speed greater than zero okay so this is ball speed y this is ball speed y and now i yeah so let's just test this out Okay, so we have a parallel 1, perfect, that's a nice little collision there, and parallel 2, nice collision there as well. So, as you can see here, we have quite a bit of a collision systems, and if you really have to improve this, and what you can do is just play around with these variables a bit. So, one thing I could suggest is that you do this, uh, and you do this right so let's just test this out again and see how it goes so this should improve the collision logic a bit yes okay so now that we have implemented all the collision cases the top and bottom edge collision and the parallel collisions now what we really need is uh, the condition when the ball goes out of play so if ball x less than zero right oh uh, that is the first condition that means player two wins right and also we have the condition where player one wins player one wins would be if ball x plus ball size greater than width right so at this case what we are supposed to do i'll just put this as my first case just going to remove these faces and i'm going to put it here right so at that time we have to stop the game so in order to do this let me just create one more variable and this let me call these variables as uh, game control game control right so boolean is game on is game on is equal to true right so and let me put all these statements inside this action performed method into this variable so let me take this let me take this let me take this and put it here right perfect uh now what i have to do is i first i have to turn off the game is game on false and is game on is equal to false right so um okay let me just do this so once this condition happens, so what uh, ideally what I would be doing that time is uh, player one wins. So let me create two more variables. So int p1 score is equal to zero. Int p2 score is equal to zero. Okay. Now if player one wins, I have to update his score. So p1 score plus plus. And if player 2 wins, P2 score plus plus. Okay, so now let's just go back to our game screen and have a look. Okay, so we begin playing. That's our first collision. Okay, yep, and now let me miss the ball on purpose. Yes, now player 2 has lost. But all oh, the scores are not displayed on the screen, so I want the scores on the screen as well. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to travel back to our 
uh, paint company and I'm going to print out the scores. So painting paint uh, the scores. So this is for player one, right? So G2 dot draw string, right? So this is P1 score plus uh, this just accepts a string. So that's the reason why I do that. And let me do this as well. So player one and player two, right? So P2 score. Uh, let me put it somewhere around 500. Okay, now let's just take a look at the screen. Okay, you can see the scores on the screen, but they're far too small to read, right? And the scores update as well, so that's a good thing. So let me change this a bit. So uh I have to change the font size so what I do is g2.set font new font and let me have something like uh, times new room okay and let me give this the, the size of about 20 and uh, but before that I have to give it font dot bold okay so now let's just look at our score okay I think it's still far too small so let me just increase it a bit more let's say 40 right perfect right so this uh, looks like a ping pong game already so let me just play here a bit and let me defeat player one okay right so now uh, player two wins and his score updates but one crucial thing is missing uh, i would i really like to restart my game so how am i going to do that very simple i just go back here uh, to my keyboard controller and I say if is game on uh, if the game is not on okay and and the player presses the letter R so the K right so and I'm gonna call this reset function so it basically resets all the variables in the game so void reset right and what this is going to do is basically it's going to turn the game back on and it's going to put the ball back in the middle of the board so how does that work so ball x is equal to uh, width minus ball size by 2 and ball y is equal to height minus ball size by 2 and also the ball should take uh, a random initial direction right so ball speed x is equal to math dot random uh, greater than 0 0.5 right if it is greater than 0 greater than equal to 0 0.5 what I want to do is continue in uh, ball speed x or I am going to reverse its direction right so that's how that works and ball speed y the same thing for that as well uh, math dot random ball speed y and ball speed y right so now those two things are sorted out i also want to put my paddles back on the middle of the board so how am i going to do that oh very simple once again so p1 y is equal to uh, height minus parallel height by 2 okay and p2y is equal to height minus parallel height by 2 so let's just test this game out again so let's play perfect we have a first collision ah uh, yes player one has lost so let me just reset the game perfect yes keep it moving keep it moving keep it moving yes 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 perfect uh, one additional thing I would like to do here is also set the directions back to zero so they're not moving at the start of the game so let's just have a look again so once I let the ball go out of play and I reset yes they're back to the uh, start of the screen and they're not moving right so perfect now we have our ping pong game ready one fine thing I would like to do is when I initialize the balls I would like to uh, have them start in the middle of the board anyway. So I go back here and I go my ball x and I put this here 
and I put this here okay and because I'm referring to this ball size variable I have to put it as my last bit okay perfect now let's just have a look at the game yes we are ready to go and you can always increase the speed play around with uh, the other variables and make this game much better uh, as per your liking but this is how you implement a uh, basic uh, pong game on your systems and now coming to the final question uh, usually when you run games on your systems you probably don't open your id you just click a logo and you expect the game to pop great so how are you going to achieve that extremely simple i just have to go click file here and i'm going to click export and i'm going to export it as a runnable java file under java and i'm just going to say yes the launch configuration is game uh, pong and i'm just going to put it in this pong.jar uh, in this destination so when i say finish and it's already exported i just go down here and i click this pong.jar so and you have your game ready to launch on your desktop perfect right so that's how you build your first pong game guys and i hope uh, you guys build a lot more exciting games and most importantly have fun with your coding and keep growing